Hi, my name is Kieran Quinn. I'm the research support librarian here at Maynooth University. So I'm just going to bring you through uh, very quickly about how to download EndNote 20 desktop onto your device and some basic functionality. So the first thing you'll need to do to get EndNote 20 desktop is go into the IT services page and go down to Apps Anywhere. Select uh, for Windows or for Apple Chromebook, depending on what you use and just click into the Apps Anywhere link. Now it'll bring you through a validation process to get you into this page where you can download software. So you just choose EndNote 20 once you get in there, and then you can either launch it onto your device or you can download it. Now when you download it, it'll download two files. One is the uh, EndNote 20 software, and the other one is, um, it'll give you the product code. It's kind of a smaller file. So to complete the download, you'll need uh, to have that product code. So that's where, where you'll get it from. Once it's downloaded, you'll end up with EndNote desktop on your device, which looks a bit like this. Obviously yours is going to be empty until you populate it with uh, references. So to get you started, the first thing you need to do is go into file, click new, and just name your file. And this is going to be the file where they store your bibliographic records and your PDFs. So you can have multiple or a single library, whichever you want. You could just leave it with my EndNote library if that's what you want, and save it anyway. And that's where you'll, you'll be able to pick your references up next time you're in EndNote. Just cancel that for a minute. Now also in file, there's an export import function. So if you're bringing in records from another reference management tool, or if you wanted to import PDFs, that's where you can do that. References itself, there's an option there to create um, new references manually. So rather than importing them from a database, you could just set it up yourself. So this gives you a selection of templates. So depending on what you're doing. So it's great for unusual things, maybe like if you're doing a blog and it'll give you the appropriate fields and you can just put those in and save them. And there's also the function every time you set a record up to attach a file, so that'd be the PDF or a figure, whatever it might be, you can attach that. And they also always leave you a blank field there for research notes where you can type in your own comments on the paper. So I'll just get out of that for a second. I won't save it. Next thing you need to know about is groups. So as you bring records into EndNote, they just go into the on file section. So what you need to do is sort them into groups by topic, by you know research paper, whatever you happen to need. You can file them according to topic in there anyway. And to do that, you just go into groups and create a group and name it. As simple as that. And then when you have the group set up, you can just add references to those groups. And you do that just by highlighting either one or hit control and highlight multiple records. And then you can just groups add references to and just pop them into whatever group you want. Okay. Now just as a move across there as well, you have a function there for library and there's a sync button. So if you're using um, EndNote Online, which works with EndNote Desktop, so if you're away from your device, you can just log in online and get into your records. You can synchronize the two of them up with that button. And then in here, just general housekeeping, you can search within your EndNote library, search your library, get rid of duplications, broken links, all that kind of thing. Tools, so they have a EndNote Click browser extension which you can download. And what that does, it appears in your bookmarks. So if you go into the PDF of a document, it'll prompt you then to import that PDF into uh, EndNote. So that's worth doing. It's quite a handy way of getting PDFs into your EndNote account. So they're kind of the basic tools, I suppose, up the top here. Now, as I look down the screen, there are my groups. There's my unfiled ones. This box here, this is where you can search within your EndNote library. Now, if when I highlight any of these records, see the screen pops up over here, and this gives me a summary of what I've saved. So the title, the author, journal, volumes, issues, page numbers, all that kind of thing, the DOI of the document. Uh, if you want to edit it, so if you spot any errors in it, you can edit it there. And then if you want to annotate the PDF, you can go in here, and you can either do that just by opening it, and there's a box there, and this is where you can, options there to highlight sections, add text, that kind of thing. Uh, if you're using Microsoft Edge, there's another one as well. It looks like this. And again, same kind of thing. With this, uh, you can draw on it as well. You can highlight sections. You can add text. So the draw will be like that. You can just... So very useful. And that, once you save that, then that's saved. So the next time you go into your PDF, all your changes, your annotations are all there, all your highlighted sections, okay? And when you synchronize that up with EndNote Online, that transfers over as well. So very useful tool. So that again. So that's the kind of main functions of that screen. Now, the other thing that's going on with EndNote is when you um, downloaded EndNote, it also downloaded a site while you write tool, which automatically will appear in your Word document, and it looks a bit like this. So there's your EndNote 20 tab. And the way that works is, as you are typing your paper, it allow you to insert citations and bibliography. So for example, if I'm working with that, I would just click my EndNote 20, insert citation, 
and either the citation or a note or a figure, I can pop it in, generally it's going to be citation. I'd search by a keyword, select the one I want to cite and just click insert and it drops in the citation into the text and the fuller details and bibliography. If I wanted to do footnotes, it'll do that as well. In that case, I just go into references in Word, insert footnote, back into EndNote 20, insert citation, pick up another reference I want to cite, click insert, and there's your footnote down the bottom and you're numbering in the text. So it'll, it'll do both, very handy. So that's your EndNote 20 Cite While You Write tool. Now, a thing just remember with this is if you want to make changes to any of this, you can't just type into it. You have to use their edit citation function. So you can either edit just the citation or the whole reference. You can also put in prefixes, suffixes, page numbers, add those in, just click where you want them to be in the text and just make the changes there. That's quite handy. Um, other useful things there, you can change the style. So if you don't want Harvard, very easy to change over something else like so, quick and seamless, and there's a lot of options in there, so if, if if the one you want isn't in that list, you can just select another style. Now, when you're finished, and if you want to just turn it into an ordinary Word document so you can make you know changes to it, what you can do is just go into EndNote again there and just convert citations, convert the whole thing to plain text, as simple as that, so very user-friendly. So, and it'll save you an EndNote version of the document as well, so if you ever want to go back into EndNote and use EndNote on it, you can do that as well. So that's a good one there. If you're using um, EndNote Online as well, you can select, so I can go into Preferences here, Application, and I can pick either EndNote 20 or EndNote Online, depending on which aspect of it, if you like, that I want to draw the references from. You can just pick that there. So that's the Site While You Write tool. Okay, and the basic functionality of EndNote Desktop. Now, obviously, the question you're going to be asking, how do I put material into EndNote? So very straightforward. Um, pretty much whatever database you're going to be in, there's going to be an export function. So in this case, I'm in Scopus. So what I can do is either select individual or multiple documents, and it's just click here. And I have various places to export to. In this case, I'm going to go for risk format, EndNote, export it. It'll go into my downloads, and I just give it a click, and it's now going to appear in my EndNote. Once they're in there, then I can just select them, right-click them, add references to and whatever group I want to put them into. Very straightforward. Okay. So I'll just go back to my searching again. Uh, similarly, if you're in uh, Google Scholar, you just click on the uh, inverted commas there and just click EndNote. And again, it's going to send that one off to EndNote. If I was in something like uh, Web of Science, similar kind of thing, select the ones you want to keep export and I have a choice there EndNote online EndNote desktop so I'll go EndNote desktop export them give it another click and again they appear so as straightforward as that so you can see a very user-friendly uh, tool so just a quick recap you're going to download EndNote from apps anywhere then you're going to go into EndNote you're going to go into file you're going to create a new file name it then your basic fun functions are across here, you can check those out. I'm going to create a group and then add references to groups. Okay, You'll automatically, when uh, you download this, you'll have got that site where your write tool will have popped up in your Word document. And using that, then I can start to insert citations in a variety of styles into my Word document. Then to export them in, whatever database you're using, there's going to be either called export or save. There's going to be that functionality there to export your papers into EndNote into desktop. Okay, so hopefully that'll get you started. If you have any difficulties at all, feel free to contact the library and we'll be happy to help you in any way you can. So thank you very much.